children today we are going to read mrs pepper pot and the treasure this story is from the amazing mrs pepper pot the story is very interesting because it's going to teach us about perspective okay it was a fine sunny day in january and mrs pepper pot was peeling potatoes at the kitchen sink meow said the cat meow yourself answered mrs pepper pot meow said the cat again mrs pepper pot wiped her hands and knelt down beside the cat there's something you want to tell me isn't there puss it's too bad i can only understand when i have shrunk to the size of a pepper pot she stroked the cat but puss didn't purr she just went on looking at her as if she's hypnotizing her isn't it Well, I can't spend all day being sorry for you, my girl," said Mrs. Pepper Pot, going back to the potatoes in the sink. When they were ready, she put them on the stove to cook. Puss was at the door now. "Meow," she said, scratching at it. "You want to go out, do you?" said Mrs. Pepper Pot, and opened the door. And just at that moment, she shrank to her pepper pot size. About time too," said the cat. "Now let's not waste any more time. Jump on my back and hold on tight." Puss bounded off with Mrs. Pepper Pot clinging on for all she was worth. The first danger is just around the corner," Puss said. "So sit tight and don't say a word." Off they go. All Mrs. Pepper Pot could see was a single birch tree with a couple of magpies on it. The birds seemed to be as big as eagles to her now, and the tree was like a mountain. There's the cat! There's the cat! The magpie screamed. Let's nip her tail. Let's pull her whiskers. And they swooped down, skimming so close over Mrs. Pepper Pot's head, she was nearly blown away. But Puss took no notice at all. She kept on down the hill, and the magpie soon tired of the game. See how fast the cat is running. That's that," said the cat. "Now we must watch out for the snowballs. We have to cross the boys' playground. So if any of them aim at you, duck behind my ears and hang on." Mrs. Pepper Pot looked at the boys. She knew them all. She had given them sweets and biscuits. They can't be dangerous, she said to herself. But then she heard one of them say, "Here comes the stupid cat. Let's see who can hit it first. Come on, boys!" And they started throwing snowballs as hard as they could. Puss ran on till they reached a wire fence with a hole just big enough to wriggle through. So far, so good," she said. "But now comes the worst bit, because this is a dog land, and we don't want to get caught." Mrs. Pepper Pot knew the neighbor's dog quite well. She had fed him bones and scrapes, and he was always very friendly. "We'll be all right," she thought. But she was wrong. Without any warning, the dog came chasing after them in great leaps and bounds. Mrs. Pepper Pot shook like a jelly when she saw his wide open jaws, all red with sharp white teeth, glistening in a terrifying way. Oh my, isn't that scary? She flattened herself on the cat's back and clung on for her dear life. For Puss shot like a flash across the yard, straight into the neighbor's barn. Phew," said the cat. "That was a narrow escape. Thanks very much for coming all this way with me." "That's all right," said Mrs. Pepper Pot. "But why are we here?" "It's a surprise," said the puss. "We all have to do now is find the hidden treasure. But that means crawling through the hay. So hang on. They're diving into the hay here." and off they went again slowly this time for it was hard going through the prickly stalks they seemed as big as bean poles to mrs 
pepper pot. The dust was terrible. It was in her eyes, her mouth, her hair, down her neck, everywhere. Can you see anything? asked the cat. Nothing at all, said Mrs. Pepper Pot. For by now her eyes were completely bunched up with the hayseed and dust. Try blinking, she said. For this is where my hidden treasure is, said the cat. So Mrs. Pepper Pot blinked and blinked again until she could open her eyes properly. When she did, she was astonished. All round her shone the most wonderful jewels, diamonds, sapphires, emeralds. They glittered in every hue. There you are. Didn't I tell you I had hidden treasure for you, said the cat. But she didn't give Mrs. Pepper Pot time to have a closer look. We'll have to hurry back now or your potatoes will be spoiled. So they crawled back through the hay and just as they came out into the daylight, Mrs. Pepper Pot grew to her ordinary size. She picked the cat up in her arms and walked across the yard. The dog was there, but what a different dog. He nuzzled Mrs. Pepper Pot's skirt and wagged his tail in a friendliest way. Through the gate they came where the boys were playing. Each one of them nodded to her politely and said, Good morning. Then they went up on the hill. There were the magpies in the bridge tree. But not a sound came from them. When they got to the house, Mrs. Pepper Pot put the cat down and hurried indoors to rescue her potatoes. Then she went back down the hill through the gate to the neighbor's yard and into the barn. She climbed over the hay till she found the spot where the hidden treasure lay. And what do you think it was? Make a guess before I turn the page. Ready? Four coal black kittens with beautiful shining eyes. There you go. <laughs> Isn't it lovely? See you again with another story next time. Bye-bye until then.